In this video, we're going to be doing more volumes. Similar to the previous section, we're going to be taking some area and rotating it around some line in order to get a volume. But now, instead of doing the volume with washers or with discs, what we're going to do is fill up the volume in a different way. Fill up that volume with a bunch of cylinders, and the cylinders will stack up in order to give us the whole volume. This is best seen by an example and a drawing, so let's get to it. In this video, we're going to need a basic fact that you might remember from basic high school geometry. Suppose I had a cylinder where the radius was r and the height was h. What is the surface area of this cylinder? See if you can pause the video and take a few minutes to figure it out yourself. What you do is you picture the cylinder getting cut down the center here and then splayed out into a big rectangle. Now the red lines are the cut lines here, the vertical cut lines, and so the height is still h, but what is the width of this rectangle? Remember, this rectangle is the cylinder, but cut down the side and then splayed out into this rectangle. The length of the top here should be whatever the length of the top of the circle is on the cylinder. That is the circumference of the circle, so that is 2 pi r. Okay, so now the surface area of this cylinder is the area of that square, so it's 2 2 pi r multiplied times h, or more simply just 2 pi r h. That's the surface area formula for a cylinder. So let's suppose we had a region like this that was going to get rotated around the y-axis. As usual, we draw the mirror image on the other side, and we can visualize the three-dimensional figure. Now let's suppose we were doing this problem using washers. Up in this region, the washers have a different radius than they do in the region below. Here, as you can see, the blue function is forming the outer radius and the red function is forming the inner radius for the circle that I've drawn. But down at the bottom of the figure there's a completely different situation. The inner radius is now the white solid line and the outer radius is the blue function. So it looks like in order to do this problem using washers it would be rather a lot of work. We would have to separate the integral into two different sections. The first one would have outer radius the blue g of x line and inner radius this straight line and we could do that integral from the bottom up to the intersection points here and then from those intersection points up above we would have a completely different integral. Up above we have the outer radius according to the blue g function and the inner radius according to the red f function. You can go ahead and try a problem like this but there is a better way using cylinders that we'll talk about next. Okay so back to our picture here what we're gonna do is instead of slicing the figure horizontally like the washers do, we're going to slice it vertically. Let's picture one of these vertical slices going around and rotating around the y-axis. What does this form? Well, it forms a cylinder. Now the height of the cylinder, according to this particular picture, would be the f function minus the g function. And the radius of the cylinder would be simply the x value. So in order to find the volume of the three-dimensional figure, instead of taking the integral of some washer formula like the previous video, we're going to take the integral of the surface area of the cylinder. Imagine these cylinders stacking up one cylinder inside the other cylinder, concentrically stacking in order to make the total for this three-dimensional volume. Now the general idea for using cylinders is that we're going to integrate from x equals a, which is the left x value, to say x equals b, if that was the x value of the right intersection point, and we're going to integrate with respect to x, and the formula we're going to integrate is the surface area of a cylinder. So 2 pi times the radius of the cylinder, and then some sort of function of x which represents the height of the cylinder. So the height of the cylinder will depend on the problem, it will depend on the picture, we'll have to see, and the radius of the cylinder in this case is x. That's the general idea for doing volumes of rotation using cylinders. It's better or if we can just demonstrate by doing some examples. Okay, here's our problem. We're going to find the volume, which is created by rotating the region bounded by x equals 2, x equals 3, and y equals x plus 2 around the y-axis. Here are the three lines, and we're taking this region and rotating around the y-axis. So let's go ahead and draw the mirror image. 
Notice that if we tried to do this problem with washers, we would have to separate into two different integrals, which means that the washers method is a bit more difficult. Using cylinders, we're going to cut vertically in order to make the cylinder here. Now here, the radius of this cylinder is just the x value. How about the height of one of these cylinders? Well, the height goes from the x-axis up to the y equals x plus 2 function. It looks like the height of the cylinder is x plus 2. So the volume that we're looking for here is the integral from 2 to 3 of the surface area of a cylinder is 2 pi times the radius, which is x, and also times the height, which is x plus 2. So we've got our radius and our height. Bringing the 2 pi out in front and foiling, now taking the antiderivative and plugging in and subtracting. Simplifying these numbers, our final answer is 56 pi over 3, giving us the volume of the figure on the previous slide. Suppose I had a region that was rotating around the x-axis and I wanted to do cylinders. Say, for instance, if I had three lines and I was rotating this around the x-axis, the mirror image would look something like this. And where are my cylinders? Remember that your gut instinct using washers might be to slice the figure vertically, but cylinders slice the figure in the opposite way, in this case, horizontally. So where are my cylinders? I slice it horizontally, get the mirror image, of that horizontal slice on the other side, and finally there's my cylinder. Again, the volume of the total figure would be an integral of the surface area formula, 2 pi times the radius. Let's look at this. What is the radius of this cylinder? Here the radius is the y value, and the height of the cylinder would be some height function that I could obtain by subtracting, say, that line from that line in order to get a function of y, and then I would integrate with respect to y. This would go from the lower y value, say, call it c, to the upper y value of d, and then we could proceed to find that integral and get the final answer for the problem. We're going to do more of these in class, and I hope that you'll read ahead so you'll be prepared for class. So I hope you enjoyed this video on volumes of rotation using cylinders. I also hope that as you practice more and more problems, you're going to become familiar with what's the best strategy. Should I do this with washers or should I do it with cylinders? What is the most efficient method for this problem? So make sure to check out extra examples in the book, read the book before you come to class, and start on your homework super early so that you give your brain time to absorb the new information.